Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Haute Saint Martin and today we are going to talk about the great resignation boom in 2021. I would like to go over the reasons why it has happened and how this might drastically affect our everyday life. So the month of August set a new record for the amount of people quitting their job. And if the pandemic and its resulting restrictions on freedom of movement, among other freedoms, is one of the most obvious reasons contributing to massive staff shortage, there might be a few underlying causes that I think have been revealed as we were instructed to stay home. And this reason, I think, might actually be more fundamental to what is happening. But they needed to come to people's awareness. And the pandemic was quite a catalyst in this respect. Here in the UK, many people have moved back to their countries because of Brexit, of course. Because of the relative weakness of the pounds against the euro caused uh, partly by Brexit, it is difficult to find staff. So, for example, there's a uh, recruiting agency called uh, Reed. So in May, Reed saw its highest number of posted jobs since 2008. And in August, 250,000 more jobs were added to the list. In the US, it's even worse. Of the 4 million people, so it was 4.3 something, quit their job in August. So much that everybody is talking about the great resignation. Of course, the most affected industries are hotels and restaurants, so hospitality, wholesale trade, public education, healthcare, and social. Obviously, a large proportion of these people quit to get another better paid job in the same industry. But another thing worth mentioning is the effect that these mass resignations are having on the looming hyperinflation we will soon be experiencing. Very quickly, what is inflation? It's when the prices increases without the uh, wage, the average wage following uh, the pace. Okay, so how is this great resignation is going to impact? Well, first, it increases cost to attract and retain employee. Second, it increases cost to train new employee. Even if you have experience, there is always a discovery period, a time needed to become fully efficient. And that's why uh, employers uh, like to get it right from the beginning because it's extremely costly to make a mistake uh, upon recruitment. Third, Employees spend money. They're not the one who saves the most. And by seeking out better paid job, they will have more to spend to increase and sustain demand. So the prices are going to increase. Fourth, eventually, as employee costs will increase for company, so will the price or the service of the end product because, you know, it has to be uh, repercuted uh, somewhere. But what is baffling to many economists is that facts do not confirm their predictions. Why people are not getting back to work as funding lockdowns are ending and people are no longer paid to watch Netflix, basically. So what is really happening here? Well, of course, I can only speculate, but um, I always like to see things under a psychological angle. And my feeling is that many people as they stayed at home, a time to reflect and think about their job and more generally their life situation. And they were no longer brain fogged by the rat race. They spent time with family or not, assessing what was really important. Suddenly you are deprived of the usual pleasure and artificial needs. And you may come to some essential realization about purpose, values, and how you would see yourself the next 10 or 20 years. When you spend months at home slowing down, not able to travel and run like a headless chicken or frantically searching for the next weekend and vacation distractions, like an addict looking for the next dopamine fix, something happens. My guess is that this whole experience changed us as a collective and hopefully got us some healthy realization. Many people started to do something they fancied. I started this channel and studied crypto. My guess is that many people started some activity, either a business, a new education, or something closer to their aspirations, something that connected them 
to who they were. Money is not enough to find a job satisfying. There are essential components to professional fulfillment. First of all, some degree of autonomy, which is the contrary of micromanagement. You want to input creativity on the work you're doing and have some influence on its outcome. The second component, the ability to experience the fruit of your labor. Many jobs nowadays are so specialized that some workers never get to see the end results of the work they put into or the project they have participated to. The most extreme, of course, being on-chain work. Diversity, which brings pleasure, fun and knowledge. People have been trapped for years in such meaningless tasks. And as long as they're going through the motions, you barely have the time to think and reflect before the next weekend, the next vacation, the next family reunion, and then you go again. Here's the thing. For a whole crazy and incredible year, we had none of that. We were basically stuck at home with unprecedented opportunity to look within, to, recon to reconnect, to rekindle, to think. I think that the pandemic in this respect was the biggest light detector there is because there's no way you can maintain the illusion of your life when you're faced with yourself doing nothing else for quite a while. Okay, that is if you don't escape in getting booze and uh, watching Netflix all day long. In a way, that was very positive. Workers are suddenly becoming less productive, which is completely new. For the past decades, the top 1% have increased their wealth massively and sure they have during the pandemic even more while the bottom 90% have gotten poorer and I guess it's not going to get any better. Okay, I'm going to digress a little bit, but this is all started when the US bank stopped to peg the dollar to the gold in 1971, if I'm correct. From that point on, governments were able to print as much money as they wish and to disconnect it from intrinsic value. And we all know that during this pandemic and now on, they're just printing like there's no tomorrow. They will have to, at some point, probably raise the interest rate and that's gonna trigger a massacre. So basically, where are we now? Well, people are under the impression that this is a short-term contraction, but I think this is quite different. Uh, in the US and the UK where other countries, you cannot get enough people to do the work that needs to be done. Uh, it's gonna take years to go through the jam log uh, created by the pandemic. Yeah. This is hyperinflation. Uh, US and Europe have been the main importance and over the years we've made our economy totally dependent on Asia and the less expensive countries exporting the production over there. We are lacking that. We're completely dependent on the being supplied and transported, which is massively disrupted at the moment. So these countries also, as their economy have grown, they need their product and uh, if the shortage are increasing, then the prices will increase exponentially here. And I think that this is our greed biting us back. If everything increases, and in particular staff, it will make sense for companies to suddenly start investing in automatization, which would have been too costly before. But jobs will be more and more automated because that's logical, you know, why would we? Once we have made the investment, then it's done. You don't have to recruit to go through all the things. So factory automation, automated transportation like Tesla and the likes, automated Uber, automated fast food. So that's quite obvious, I think, and it's coming. Why not automated accountants and lawyers? I think with artificial intelligence, this is very possible. Even medicine, medical, and the society is going to be completely transformed. So what is there uh, for us to do? I do think that decentralized finance built around the blockchain technology is one of the massive response and we are entering in a completely new age and it's only the beginning. And in this area, tables have turns and allows people to have direct, direct access to incredible store of value. Don't take my word for it. Listen on to YouTube and other channels, the likes of Michael Seller, the CEO of MicroStrategy, and there's many people talking about it. There is a world of knowledge and free education are out there, which is an incredible opportunity. So what do you think? What is your opinion on it? I would love to, to know. 
And um, if you like this video, I, I don't post very regularly and that often. So if you don't want to miss the next one, just subscribe. Give it a thumbs up and uh, until next time. Bye bye.